Faithful John. There was once an old king who, having fallen sick, thought to himself, This is very likely my deathbed on which I am lying. Then he said, Let Faithful John be sent for. Faithful John was his best beloved servant, and was so called because he had served the king faithfully all his life long. When he came near the bed, the king said to him, Faithful John, I feel my end drawing near, and my only care is for my son. He is yet of tender years and does not always know how to shape his conduct. And unless you promise me to instruct him in all his actions and be a true foster father to him, I shall not be able to close my eyes in peace. Then answered faithful John, I will never forsake him and will serve him faithfully, even though it should cost me my life. And the old king said, then I die, being of good cheer and at peace. And he went on to say, After my death, you must lead him through the whole castle into all the chambers, halls and vaults, and show him the treasures that in them lie. But the last chamber in the long gallery in which lies hidden the picture of the princess of the golden palace, you must not show him. For if he were to see that picture, he would directly fall into so great a love for her that he would faint with the strength of it, and afterwards, for her sake, run into great dangers, so you must guard him well. And as faithful John gave him his hand upon it, the old king became still and silent, laid his head upon the pillow, and died. When the old king was laid in the grave, faithful John told the young king what he had promised to his father on his deathbed, and said, And I will certainly hold to my promise and be faithful to you, as I was faithful to him even though it should cost me my life. When the days of mourning were at an end, faithful John said to the prince, It is now time that you should see your inheritance. I will show you all the paternal castle. Then, <clears throat> then he led him over all the place, upstairs and downstairs, and showed him all the treasures and the splendid chambers. One chamber only he did not open, that, that in which the perilous picture hung. Now the picture was so placed that when the door opened, it was the first thing to be seen and was so wonderfully painted that it seemed to breathe and move. And in the whole world was there nothing more lovely or more beautiful. The young king noticed how faithful John always passed by this one door and asked, Why do you not undo this door? There is something inside that would terrify you, answered he. But the king answered, I have seen the whole castle, and I will know what is in here also. And he went forward and tried to open the door by force. Then faithful John called him back and said, I promised your father on his deathbed that you should not see what is in that room. It might bring great misfortune on you and me were I to break my promise. But the young king answered, I shall be undone if I do not go inside that room. I shall have no peace day or night until I have seen it with these eyes, and I will not move from this place until you have unlocked it. Then faithful John saw there was no help for it, and he chose out the key from the big bunch with a heavy heart and many sighs. When the door was opened, he walked in first, and thought that by standing in front of the king, he might hide the picture from him, but that was no good. The king stood on tiptoe and looked over his shoulder. 
And when he saw the image of the lady that was so wonderfully beautiful and so glittering with gold and jewels, he fell on the ground powerless. Faithful John helped him up, took him to his bed, and thought with sorrow, Ah, me, the evil has come to pass. What will become of us? Then he strengthened the king with wine until he came to himself. The first words that he said were, Oh, the beautiful picture! Whose portrait is it? It is the portrait of the princess of the golden palace, answered faithful John. Then the king said, My love for her is so great that if all the leaves of the forest were tongues, they could not utter it. I stake my life on the chance of obtaining her, and you, my faithful John, must stand by me.